I'm a northerner. I'm a legal northerner. I'm a northerner in London. Yeah, well, I'm, of course, the uh, minimalist musician. Um, you know, a lot of people might recognise me from when I was nominated for Britain of the Year last year. Um, I don't know what happened with that. They never announced the results. But, uh, yeah, I, got, I just got the call saying you're nominated for Britain of the Decade now. And I thought, fine, fair enough, you know, it's decade as opposed to year, that's ten times better. So, thanks very much. Um, you know, so I, I think, you know, a lot, uh, you know, like I say, you know, a lot of people might know me by now, but uh, for those who don't, you know, I'm obviously, a, you know, a northerner. I've uh, moved down from north to London. And... Uh, you know, and I'm a bit of a, well, my name says it all, I'm the minimalist musician, I legally changed my name to that. But yeah, I'm uh, quite famous in the local area for, uh, in the local London area, that is, for, uh, you know, for my minimalist musician uh, segments, where basically, you know, I, I write and perform my own uh, parody songs, um, but I don't use any instruments or anything like that, you know. Um, which does cause some problems sometimes, but it's all part of the art form, really. You know, you've got to understand that. Really, um, it does become annoying when you've got to spend about five minutes before each song explaining what the what you're parodying. Okay, so this one is, uh, you know, about a woman I used to know. Uh, you know, it's based on a true story of when we were working on an allotment together. For this stupid course that we had to do when we were unemployed up in north um you know basically it's a parody of uh, the girl of the boy with the thorn in his side um this is the girl with the poisonous hands in order to you know get people to understand oh so the song goes like that you know but apart from that i think you know people are you know receiving it quite well you know i've had great reviews for a lot of my songs and yeah you know people are you know re really into the in the new genre of music I'm forming <laughs> radish actually and still she won't believe you and if she won't believe you now will she ever believe you she's just used about six d hand wipes trying to wash the poison off her fucking hands 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 that's not very fucking handy well when i first moved to london i was quite worried about um you know sort of settling in and things i thought you know you know they're not going to take too well to another immigrant albeit from the same country as them coming over there to you know do this that and the other but you know i thought you know so what i'll do to sort of fit in a bit more i'll create some of my own cockney slang you know um i made it up obviously and that's the point in creating it yourself obviously but you know, some people don't understand that when you first say it, so you've got to repeat it, haven't you? Um, anyway, you know, I've created some of my own slang. I just, you know, just to give you a few examples, you know, let's say, you know, you know someone who's unemployed, you know. You'd say, oh, he's, he's on the Bob Doll. You know, that means he's on the doll. Now, I know his name is Bob Doll, but... Well, I couldn't just say Bob Doll, could I? So that wouldn't work, so... He's on the Bob Bowl. So, you know, it still works. Um, you know, apple and pear. That means your wife's having an affair. You know. Uh, are you a dandy? Would you like some candy? You know, so these all work, I think. You know, but it just depends on, you know, so sometimes people don't understand it, but then you explain it to them, you know. Like when I first heard two Bob bits, I, I didn't understand what the fuck was going on, you know. 
But but now I understand it. It's like oh yeah, of course. I guess I guess you might say the two bob bits sounds like the shits to me. So a little joke there. We all live in an orange fucking boat. Orange fucking boat. Orange fucking boat. We all live in an orange fucking boat. Orange fucking boat. Orange fucking boat. Well, I think the orange boat song was uh, more sort of, um, you know, accurate to how uh, life actually is for a lot of people, you know. Because when you think about being on a yellow submarine, yellow submarine, yellow submarine, etc., you know, when you think about life on a yellow submarine, you know, it's like, you know, it's comforting in a way, you know. In, as we saw in the music video, you get to travel to all these weird and wonderful places and all the rest of it. But, you know, in reality, a submarine like that would probably last about five miles before it started, you know, getting problems and, you know. But for the five minutes where, you know, everything's fine, you know, it's nice and secure and safe and everything. And life just isn't like that, you know. And I think that's what I was trying to put across in the orange boat song, is that, you know, life's a lot more like living on an orange boat because, you know, it, it's difficult conditions when you're on the boat, you know, you might have to, and sometimes, you know, it pisses it down at sea. So, you know, and, and sometimes you are in a situation in the sea where you might be frightened for your life and you know you might be like that in your normal life as well away from the sea so you know there's a lot of similarities between life and living on an orange boat and you know and obviously it had to be an orange boat because it's like you know bright and that symbolizes the uh, the you know the brightness that people you know are like you know oh you got to be cheerful all the time and be happy, smile at the customers and all the rest of it. This sort of positive attitude people put across in life and when of course they're actually fucking just as miserable as the rest of us. And yeah, that's all it's saying really.